So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. So let's say we have this function here. f of x equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so we're going to look at a couple of limits. And um, well, I guess one thing is uh, for this kind of function, we definitely want to graph it real quick. And so right away, we can see that this is the upper half of a circle. with A radius of 1. So that's 1, 1, 1. There we go. There's a graph of that particular um, function. So let's go through a couple of uh, limits and look at how we might use this theorem. Okay. So sometimes the question comes up, well, and I'll write it down here. What is the limit as x approaches 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared? So as we're approaching 1, what is that limit equal? And so in this case, it's kind of a difficult question to answer because we're thinking, well, I guess it's kind of approaching 0. But if we look at the left and right hand limit, it'll help us answer this. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left hand side of the square root of 1 minus x squared that one's easy. From the left-hand side, we keep on approaching, 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 zero. Okay. But what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side of the square root of 1 minus x squared? Well, from the right-hand side, well, there's no function over here. So we can't approach 1 without a function. So this one does not exist. Well, now that we have this information, we can answer this question. What is the limit as x approaches 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared? And according to this theorem, well, first of all, you need a left-hand limit, which we do, and we need a right-hand limit. Well, right there, this all falls apart because we don't have a right-hand limit. And then the third thing is, is these would have to be equal. So because we don't have a right-hand limit, we can say that this does not exist. And so we were able to answer this question about what's happening when we get to basically this end point there. And then we could do the same thing for, I guess this is a negative one over here, but we could do the same thing for a negative one. But um, the idea is with these one-sided limits, sometimes these one-sided limits do help us answer this question, does the limit exist?